So just because you're a beginner in, in your computer science journey does not mean that you can wait any longer to start learning how to use these more advanced AI tools. Now I'm gonna walk you through this called Crew AI. We're not gonna install it. Don't worry about the stress of having to you know, download things, install things. I don't care if you've only taken one programming class. Maybe you don't even have any programming experience. I'm gonna show you how, how valuable it is gonna be for you to start using this, especially if you're a beginner. Now, I'm not gonna say it's easy, because again, you're early in your career, but I do wanna go over why you need to look into this, right? So before we had tools like ChatGPT, now everybody's talking about Dev and AI and how that's gonna replace software engineers. Well, we have these things called AI agents, and what Crew AI, the, what Crew AI does basically allows Think about it like multiple instances of chat gpt chats talking to each other to solve problems right i'm sure you've done this where maybe you built one chat gpt you know instance and you asked it maybe you just wanted questions about biology and they had another chat gpt prompt that you have built out mainly to you know act as a professional writer and you kind of you're probably copy paste copying and pasting back and forth with those i know i did just to make sure you got those really specific those really well fi fine-tuned answers so what Cray AI does and what we're gonna go over is it does that but on steroids. So again, I do wanna emphasize the best way you're gonna be able to learn these tools is by doing them. Don't worry about the fact that you haven't taken linear algebra or that you've never taken an AI class or machine learning class. That doesn't matter at this point. If you try doing that now, you'd be so behind at the end of the semester that you just wouldn't be able to catch up. So you need to start developing that confidence of learning by doing. So. We read this short description right here, right? Cutting edge framework for orchestrating role-playing autonomous AI agents, so multiple agents, by fostering collaborative intelligence, Cray AI empowers agents to work together. That's the key point, to work together seamlessly tackling complex tasks. So here, again, if you want to do all the reading on the core concepts, read that here. Don't, you know, scroll through that, copy and paste it onto ChatGPT and learn about it. Don't. You know, don't wait to register next semester for an AI class and then come back a year from now. Here you have your how-to guides. Again, we're not gonna stress about that. If you feel confident, you can jump on this, look for a YouTube video. I'm sure some people have done it already. I'm not gonna do that in this video. But then you have your examples, right? So this is what I do want you to focus on, at least, you know, for your curiosity, right? Here we have some already built examples. We have prepare for meetings, trip planner, Instagram posts. Um, so let's take a look at those, right? And why is that more valuable in the context of Crew AI? So if we look at the readme page on the repo, and again, maybe this is the first time you see GitHub. All GitHub is is just where your code is stored. Again, don't be scared of that. I have a short video where we go over it real quick on my YouTube channel if you want to check that out. But again, we have, they've made all these examples for you. You just need to install them, set them up. Again, when you pull these or download these, what, what you will have learned in terms of experience, just in terms of playing with it, um, it's gonna put you farther ahead from everybody else that is still waiting to register to take a class that's just theoretical from, you know, Concepts that while they are important, they're not as important as starting to apply these things now, right? So even look at this one, right? Create a job posting. Maybe you're thinking like, hey, I've done that before. I can ask ChatGPT to act as a recruiter, blah, blah. Well, if we read through this, again, I'll emphasize how much documentation and tutorials they provide you. They basically hold your hand for setting this up. So we know this, uh, from reading the description, we see that this automates the process for coming up with job postings, right? And again, you kind of, maybe you still don't see the value on that. Maybe you don't want to go through the trouble in installing this. So we look at the agents, at the agents file on here, and we just read through that. And again, don't mind if you've never read Python. Python is pretty user friendly. It's pretty much like plain English. So we have these multiple agents. We have one, two, three. You read through these roles. So one's a research analyst, one's a job description writer, one's a review and editing specialist. So these are all gonna be communicating with each other to come up with the, you know, the answer for your request in a very organized way, right? Like I was saying earlier, it's like before when you would copy paste things from one chat GPT chat to another to get a better answer because the other one was fine to a certain way. You don't have to do it anymore. But not only that, if we look at this on tools on this section, you see that for all of these, they'll have a web search tool and these are all well, like separate dev tool. That's a scraping tool and others like that throughout 
you know, the agents themselves, right? So not only do you only have instances of ChatGPT speaking and collaborating to another, you also have the leveraged ability of, you know, scraping the web in real time. And I know the ChatGPT4 does that now, but now you have it, you're doing multiple instances at the same time, each from its own separate agent, right? So that's where it starts getting very, you know, I would say very beautiful because you can really do a lot with that. And again, this is going to be especially beneficial for you, especially if you've never used GitHub, especially if you've never used Python, because even though it's going to be maybe a little bit of a headache to get that set up and maybe you feel uncomfortable and maybe you have to Google or I don't know if only there was a chat application you could ask how to do things if you get errors, if you get stuck. It's going to put you so far ahead of anybody that's in your grade, that anybody that's in, you know, whether you're a freshman or a sophomore, because the simple fact that you put this together and that you're using it to your benefit. Now, one of two things is going to happen when you finish this. You're either going to become very curious about this, you know, about this tool, and you're going to start using it more to your advantage, or maybe you're just going to decide that you don't care, and maybe you do switch majors, and that's completely fine too. But at the end of the day, you'll be, even though this tool is a few months old, Honestly, by now, it's probably getting a little outdated. It's going to bring you up to speed and it's going to put you ahead of everybody else that is still trying to play catch up by learning things that, to be honest, are somewhat outdated if you're trying to become competitive in the market, right? So just for the sake of an analogy, let's say at the end of the day, you're getting this degree because you want a job. You want to be able to pay for your student loans like I'm doing now. You want to be able to you know, set yourself up for as a marketable candidate, right? Think of it this way. Imagine you're a construction worker, right? And you're going to trade school. At the end of the job, when you go through, at the end of the day, when you're going through your interviews, all that they want to know is that you know how to, you know, that you know how to build, that you know how to use tools. And if at the point in, if at some point in your interview process or while you're applying to jobs, let's say this is when the drill is invented, right? And the drill is this very nice, very unique tool that not that many people know how to use, not that many people know how it even works, but some people know how to use it. Do you really think that in that interview process of, you know, trying to make sure that they get somebody that's good at making things that, you know, they know how to follow protocols, they know how to follow, you know, safety issues. How important do you think it's going to be that you know how to build the drill itself? It's not going to be that important. What's going to matter is that you know how to use it and that the things that you make with it are, you know, are not going to fall apart, right? Nobody wants a house that's going to fall apart. So it's similar to this. I know that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but like I said, at the end of the day, unless you're going into college to become an academic and you want to become, you know, a professor, which again, there's still a lot of research to be done. If that's your goal, you know, I definitely respect that. It's, there's a lot of material to learn, you know, then go for it. But if your goal is to stay up to date, not feeling like you're being left behind and you want to be a marketable candidate, a competitive candidate in terms of not just software engineering, not just computer science, but also in the current technologies, putting this together, downloading this, going through the headache of installing it, especially if you're not familiar with this, is really going to put you ahead of the curve, I think. And if you look at these other examples, which I'll let you do out on your time, even these ex advanced ones, at the end of this, not even, you know, at the end of this, you could call it challenge. You're going to be basically scraping the web and analyzing stocks. You're going to be creating, you know, landing pages. And you're going to be doing all this stuff with AI, with crew AI, with, with multiple agents while everybody's still using ChatGPT. So again, that's my recommendation. Maybe I'll put a video together next time where we download it and, you know, just to kind of, I mean, we just where we hold each other's hands to get through this so that you can see the simplest, most straightforward way. I know when I started, sometimes it was a little frustrating to watch videos where basically everything was set up and then I still had to go and deal with some other headaches myself. And that's not the kind of content I wanna put out. I wanna make sure that people feel like they're being encouraged and guided through these things as they go along. So again, look into this, watch some tutorials, read up on it, see all the cool stuff people are doing with Career AI. And I wish you best of luck in your computer science career. Definitely don't quit, definitely don't, don't drop out, and I'll see you in the next one.